the recording. All right, teammates, we're going to go ahead and get it popping. We're going to put it on wax so you can see it and experience it over and over again. Uh, we are recording this training so you can have it available to you in our Hierarchy YouTube channel uh, whenever you want to, because this training is going to be that powerful, that important. Thank you guys for tapping in your teammates, having them jump on. Family, as you're coming on board, we're asking you, please turn your camera on. You know, so we can see you. There you go. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get this show on the road. So what I want to do, family, is I want to start out, if you don't mind, I want to start out um, with uh, some news you can use. That's what I'm going to start out with is some news you can use, right? And so every once in a while, we want to talk about some things that are relevant to you and the financial services industry, but tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about something that's relevant to you uh, in the financial services business arena. As a business owner, believe it or not, you have started your own financial services business, right? This is not Primerica Social Services. This is Primerica Financial Services. And by getting licensed, check this out, Lana, you have the ability to distribute financial services products. You can build an agency, basically a company within a company. So I want to talk a little bit about that because I think that that's going to set the tone and that's going to set the table for what we're going to be talking about in the coming weeks. Just kind of stay with me, guys, and, and, and where I'm going with this, all right? And so I pulled this article from Entrepreneurs Magazine. It came out uh, roughly about a year ago. It says, how to think about systems in your business how to think about systems in your business. Being able to see your business as a system helps create the structure necessary to grow and succeed. See, you, you've heard me say it before, I'll say it again. Some of you guys <clears throat> may not have heard me say it. Check this out. People don't run businesses. Systems run businesses. Real businesses, I'm talking about. People don't run businesses. Systems run businesses. People run the system, right? And so I just want to just highlight a couple of different excerpts from this article. I'm going to reshare my screen. And so you guys bear with me. Check this out. This right here, it says, hey, many entrepreneurs, check this out, Queen. It says, many entrepreneurs start a business and end up owning a job. Y'all just missed it. Many entrepreneurs start a business and end up just owning a job. The difference between owning a job and owning a business lies in the various systems used to operate the company. These systems determine how the business functions and its structure. Are y'all with me on this? Give me a thumbs up if you're with me. I mean, this is good stuff. This is powerful stuff. Many small business owners are content with just owning a job, meaning that I'm going to start my business. You know, so you might have um, a person who's a barber that opens up a barber shop. Are y'all with me? You might have somebody that, um, you know, hey, look, they, 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 they are a good landscaper. They got some tools and equipment, some mowers and some edgers and all of that stuff. They open a landscaping business. But here's the challenge. They're not business owners. Auntie, they self-employ. They don't own a business. They own a job. They just created a situation and a place for them to go to work. That's not a business. That's not a business, right? It says what separates a business from someone who just owns a job is the systems used. Y'all got to catch this the systems used to operate the business, right? They want independence. I'm back on the article, the excerpt. They want independence. They want the ability to work for themselves, but others strive to turn their businesses into self-functioning, into a self-functioning entity. That's what you should be after. You should want to strive to turn this, your primarica business into a self-functioning uh, entity one that gives you freedom. They can walk away from the business for months, but when they return, they find their business continuing to run like clockwork. Let me ask y'all something. Imagine if you had, now we talk about this when we recruit people in the presentation, Erica, 
We, when we talk about the, the recipe for creating generational wealth, if you're doing the presentation, I'll do it. You talk about investments, you talk about life insurance, and you talk about entrepreneurship. When we talk about entrepreneurship, we say, hey, tap into the free enterprise system in America, build your own business. Building your own business is like building a money machine. Imagine if you can make money, whether you get out of bed or not. You had money paying your business, paying you, kicking you off money, whether you got out of bed or not. How would that feel? I have yet to meet a person that says, well, I wouldn't like that. I've yet to meet a person that said, no, nah, I'd much rather go in and fight traffic early in the morning, stay somewhere where I really don't want to be for eight plus hours a day, then fight traffic going back. I'd much rather trade my time for money. Everybody, the American dream is to be able to have a business that works for you and you make money and you have the freedom and control of your time to enjoy it. That's what systems do, guys. That's what systems do for your business, right? That's what systems do for your business. And so with that, with that, the process and procedure, hold on a second, y'all, hold on. Y'all pray for me, man. Y'all pray for me. Um, I just I just served my youngest son his dinner. He came in talking about he's still hungry. He didn't demolish his plate. He talking about he's still hungry. So, man, I, when you got growing kids, anybody got boys? I tell you, I know you had a house full of boys, man. Like, I gave that boy a lot of food. <laughs> and, uh, and man, that and joke, man, that joke, that joke, that joke there just like, like tow it down. Tow it down. It was crazy. It was crazy. It's time to double up. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like for real. I'm like, bro, I thought I, I thought I hooked you up, right? And so, uh, big shout out to Rahima. She's with Messiah. He's at his baseball practice. They they just put his practice on Tuesdays, so she's manning that station while me and Noah we're here at the house holding it down. But um, but with that, guys, check this out. Coming back to uh, the article, uh, the processes and procedures. In a business, check this out, are like the habits of an individual. They tend to form by deciding once, you know. Then when faced with similar decisions, we make similar choices. Uh, we do this repeatedly. We start to create habits. Most people don't optimize their habits. The most successful business, businesses optimize their processes and procedures. Check this out. The most successful businesses optimize their processes and procedures. They don't take their success for granted and assume that their people will do everything right without training and structure. I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. Instead, they optimize the processes to help the people do what works best. So why am I saying all of this? Because we're about to step in to um, a place in the business to where I truly want you to have a business. I don't want you to be hustling Primerica. If you if you want to, that's fine. That's your choice. But I want to hope, I, I want, I like the old folks, I want to hope you. I want to help you. I want to help you look at this in a way that Raheem and I are looking at it. And that is learning it and approaching it as though you want to build a business that one day it can work and you don't have to. Is anybody open to have a business that'll work for them and you don't have to work? Am I talking to the right group? Are y'all are y'all cool with that? All right. So listen, if, if if that's if I'm talking your language, then you gotta lock in with me starting tonight and you gotta go on this journey with me. So let's keep it moving, guys. Check this out. Because now more than ever, because that little guy and my little guy, man, I, man, I have freedom on my mind more now than ever. So now we're going to step into this success dojo. I mentioned this last week, man, right now, you know, step in to the success dojo with me. We talked about it last week or in the coming weeks, man, as we lead into our summer of separation season, season which is going to start in June. Man, we're going to go into the summertime. This is going to be the most skilled team, the most disciplined team, the most profitable team, and the most cohesive team in all of Primerica. But it's going to start right now. 
the most skilled, the most disciplined, the most profitable, the most cohesive. So man, I need you to be locked into training early. I need you to be early on training. Don't trickle on the training. Schedule it in. Be early on training. Be five minutes early. I start the music, right? I start the music at 625. Five minutes before I start the music. Man, that's your cue to get on. You don't have to wait till 6.30. Man, we got to be disciplined. Let's get on and let's be ready to where I, I only play the music for 10 minutes because I know people going to be trickling on for 10 minutes. Look, if everybody is here at 6.30, trust me, family, we starting at 6.30. I'm ready. I'm just trying to give people lead in time to get it popping. But let's be disciplined because we're going to be skilled. We're going to be cohesive. We're going to be profitable in our business. And it starts tonight, and we're going to buy into systems. So we're stepping into the success dojo together. That's what we're doing, all right? In addition to that, you heard me talk last week about us growing in skills. Well, Nick, what skills are we growing in? Winning presentation, closing skills, overcoming objections, getting referrals. But tonight, starting tonight, we're going to tackle this one right here, the winning presentation the winning presentation. And family, I want to go into this whole series about mastering the winning presentation. Y'all missed that. See, look, it has to be a winning presentation. There's a difference. And I'm going to talk about what makes a presentation a winning presentation, you bet. I'm going to talk to y'all about that. And we're going to go on this journey together. But I want to talk about the power of duplication first to, to, to really just build on that article that I shared with you guys, the power of duplication. And so I was asking myself the question today as I was working on this training, who has the best hamburger in Houston? For those who live in the greater Houston area, the greater Houston area, who got the best burger in Houston? Let me ask that question. You can feel free to come off, raise your hand or whatever, come off mute. Who got the best burger in Houston? Well, you say, that's my spot. That place has the best burger in Houston. And don't say water burger. Don't do it. Don't do it. But who got the best burger? I'm joking. You can say Whataburger if you want to. But who do you guys think has the best burger in Houston? Whether you like beef, turkey, whether you like lamb burgers, whether you a vegetarian. I like the black bean burger over here. Who has the best burger in Houston? Anybody want to uh, throw, th throw their suggestion out there on who you think got the best burger in Houston? Now check, now check this out. They got the two things you're looking for. You're looking for the best veggie burger. Houston got the best veggie burger off the top. They got a good one. All right, but you come out a regular hamburger, man. Um, man, really, be honest, it's gonna be like a surprise. But I think that Shake Shack got better good burgers. Okay, all right. I think Shake. I mean, I mean, yeah. Shake Shack is good. I, I know, I know, I know, I know Mike. No, I know Mike. Know who got the good burgers? I know Mike. Know who got the good burgers? Mike. Know who got the good everything? Barbecue, the soul food. Yeah, I don't. I don't buy burgers. I make my own. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. So Mike say he got the best burger in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> Big Gary, what you got, man? Who you think got the best burger in Houston? I like, uh, I'm with Mike. I mean, y'all wasting your time going to them places when you could do it in your own kitchen. <laughs> so this is ben. all about self awareness, right? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got to learn some things. <laughs> I got you, man. Hey, every now yeah. and then, hey, hey, yeah. hey, I'm sure some people can make some good burgers. But every now and then, but, you might but, say, you but, know but, what, I want to try somebody but, else. But, but look, but look, if I'm really hungry and I don't want to go home, I'm going to go to Burger King. <laughs> I'm still going to go home. I'm going to make time to cook. <laughs> So, so Gary liked the flame, uh, the flame broiled action at Burger King. Yvette, I saw yours. You said Tornado Burger out in Stafford. I've heard about them, uh, that they got some tasty burgers. Matter of fact, I've seen uh, their social media situation. They got some good burgers and all that good stuff. And you may have some in your mind, greasy. this place, that place. Talk to me, Mike. They real greasy at Tornado Burger. Everything in there greasy. <laughs> That's part of the appeal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Old grease at that. Well, people like grease. Yeah, but they like fresh grease. Yo, look, they still open for business. People still coming through there. It's a lot of people like that old grease, Mike. 
But let me share this with you guys, teammates. Check this out. You know, according to um, this this blog in Houston um, that I, that I looked up uh, when I was looking up who's got the best burger and all that type of stuff in, in Houston. Uh, this is what I found. Now, this is not me. This is what I found. It says, hey, who has the best burger in Houston? It says the 10 best burger joints in Houston. The number one burger, the number one burger that they had on their list. This is Secret Houston. It's a website you can go to that ranks all the different, you know, best of that. They said Trill Burger. Trill, T-R-I-L-L Burger. Trill Burger, which is, uh, which is created by uh, Bun B, one half of UGK. Uh, has the best burger in Houston. It says Trill Burger uh, was named the best burger in North America on Good Morning America. So they made national headlines for having the best burger in America. This is an image of what a Trill Burger looked like. Uh, for those who went out to the uh, to the rodeo, they had a, 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 a setup up there. They were selling Trill Burger. The line was longer than train smoke to get a Trill Burger. I personally got a Trill Burger. It's a tasty burger. I don't know if it's the best burger, but I enjoyed it. I liked it. But they said Trill Burger has the best burger, Erica, in Houston, Texas. According to Good Morning America, they said they got the best burger in America, right? And so <laughs> Raheem was like, does Trill Burger even have any real estate? Where they at? They got a location that's opening up right now, but they've already been crowned just based on word of mouth that they supposed to have these just amazing magical burgers, right? That's marketing. That's marketing. But let me say this, guys. As good as Trill Burger might be, Tornado Burger, your burger at the house, whatever your favorite burger stop spot is, whether it is a commercial location or your home kitchen, whatever the case may be, you and I can both agree as good as yours may be, you ain't selling more burgers than McDonald's. And McDonald's does not have the best hamburgers. But what they do have is a distribution system to market their burgers and to sell their burgers, right? And this is where I'm going somewhere with this. This is the power of duplication. So the first McDonald's location opened up in April of 1955. Ray Kroc, he opened this location up in Illinois. This is a replica of what that location looked like on the screen right now. It opened up in April of 1955. They considered this first location as the prototype location, Sean. This was the master copy. This was the master kitchen. This is where they fine-tuned their system, their system for selling hamburgers. They weren't so focused about the taste and the quality of the burger. Now they sold back then quality food and tasty food, but they were really focused on how can they distribute the food, right? And so if you fast forward to 2023, what did that prototype master copy location generate? Well, only 40,000 locations worldwide. They have 40,000 locations, right? It doesn't matter what they sell. McDonald's can sell Big Macs or tacos. They don't sell a lot of it. Why? Because they have distribution. And if you go into this McDonald's over here on the north side, one on the south side, one in Philly, they all have the same menu. They have the same system and the same process running all of them. That is the power of the system and thus the power of duplication. Where am I going with this? Because they're uniform in what they're doing, they're able to mass copy the franchise and the location, whether it's in the United States, Canada, South America, uh, Asia, Africa, Europe, they're able to mass produce it. And so, if you want to run a business, if you want to grow a business to where one day it can run and you don't have to be there to run it, then we got to view the Prove It Movement base shop as the master copy. This is the master copy. The, 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 the incubator that you are in right now, Erica, is the master copy. And what are we trying to do? We're trying to open up multiple locations. We already got three, not including the, our own, the mothership they shop. We got three RVPs from it. We're trying to open up more outlets, more locations. But in doing that, 
We all got to be on the same page and we got to be uniform in how we're distributing the services so that way it makes it easier to multiply. Are y'all still with me? Raise your hand if you're still with me. All right. That's business, you guys. You got to have a system. If you want to really grow, if you really want to get big, it, you can't finesse. Finesse is not duplicatable. Are y'all with me? If, if, you, if you just want to sell burgers out of a food truck, and you just and you can do all kind of things, but if you want to mass produce and create something that can work without you, then what you got to do is you got to build something that's scalable, that can function without you. That takes systems. So now, as we are in the success dojo, we in there now. Welcomes. We in the success dojo. Now, what we got to focus on is you mastering a component of the system and that's how to do a winning presentation. That is a crucial piece of our system. It's not the only piece, but it is a very important piece. So let me tell you about what are the goals for this winning presentation training journey that we're about to go on. Check this out. I want to help you. We want to help you become a duplication of the master copy. We want you to become a duplication of the master copy. Why? So you can continue to duplicate beyond you being duplicated. You got the system, you've mastered it. You know it up, down, side to side, backwards and forwards. You know how to go teach it and train it yourself. That's how good you need to know it. You become a duplicate of the master copy. We also want to help you get positive and consistent results on the first appointment. Positive results to where people are saying yes consistently on the first appointment to where you can set your watch by what's about to happen because you're following a system that's designed to give you positive and consistent results. If you are not following the system, there's a highly likelihood that you may not get consistent results. You may get some positive results in there, but they might not be as consistent as you would like them to be. We want to be able to uh, work that out and fix all of that and make your results positive and consistent on the first appointment. We want to help you become a money-making independent producer to where nobody has your business hostage. You don't have to wait on anybody to run your appointment for you. To, to, to jump on and do a presentation for you. If you have somebody that's interested in hearing about what you're doing, you don't have to call somebody and, and wait for the stars to align and somebody's schedule for you to get a, okay, oh, you can't meet on Thursday. Dang, let me call them back. Let me text them back to see when they available to meet. Oh, and you're trying to go back and forth between two people to coordinate a calendar for something that you we want to teach you how to do so nobody can hold your business hostage. Somebody got to say amen to that. I don't want nobody holding my business hostage. I want to be able to do what I need to do the way I need to do it. That's going to get positive and consistent results. Um, yeah. And then check this out. We want to help you achieve maximum confidence in your ability. See, I, it, it ain't just about, well, Nick, I, I'll just go out there and I'll figure it out. No, this is not... This is not the figure it out season. It's not that. This is about learning a skill and mastering a skill season that we're going to spend a lot of time and have a lot of patience teaching you because we want you to be fully confident in your ability that when you step out there and you're in front of a client that you know what to do, how to do it in a way that's going to give you the results that you're looking for. Is anybody excited about that? Can you get excited about that? Hopefully you can, all right? And so let's talk about two training requirements. I've never done this before. Check this out. I've never taught the winning pre presentation like this before. This is a first. This is the first time. But just, just wisdom has given way for me to show you these things. These are the two requirements that are gonna be necessary for you to master 
the winning presentation, even for the people who feel you already know how to do it. We're going to clean some things up for you and you're going to be ice water cold. Y'all see that? Y'all see that, that that glass of ice water right there? Y'all like, why does he have like, because we want you to be ice water cold. Ice water cold at the presentation. Two training requirements. Family, check this out. We need you to practice, drill, rehearse your presentation. We need you to practice it. We need you to drill for skill. We need you to rehearse it. Whether you're rehearsing it in the mirror, just yourself, you need to call up your, your best friend, your field trainer, your RVP, whatever it is, man. You, you know, your, your sideline, your upline, your downline, whatever the case be. Your, 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 your mom, your dad, your sister, anybody that will listen to your presentation, we need you to practice, drill, and rehearse your presentation. Not just on Tuesday. Not just on Tuesday. But mainly on the other days, other than Tuesday. And record yourself doing the presentation. You see this device right here? It's so many things. It's a phone, it's a camera, it's a recording device. You can find the app, press record, and record yourself doing the presentation and listen back to say, how do I sound? Because you don't need me critiquing you. You're probably your biggest critic. So practice, drill, rehearse the presentation. Let me tell you something, family. That's where I would normally stop. That's where I would normally stop when I train on how to do a winning presentation. But Eric, I'm so excited. We can take it one step further. Listen to me. This is the crucial step. If you really want to master this winning pre presentation, this is the step that means everything. What I'm about to show you next. That was step one. Practice drill rehearse that bad boy. Step two is I need you to schedule and run some appointments. I need you to schedule some appointments and run some appointments. And on those appointments, you participate. You practice the presentation. You present. You're a part of the presentation process. Come on, somebody. You got to get in the game. Lights, camera, action in front of somebody and actually do it. Because we can work on this on Tuesday. You can practice drill, rehearse, all that, blah, blah, blah. But if you're not scheduling any appointments, Mike, if the person ain't running no appointments, Gary, if you're not doing that, there's all of this stuff will fall by the wayside. We can spend two, three, four, five weeks doing this. But if you're not using it in the field, if you're not personally using it in the field, then guess what? You're not going to be able. You are not going to be able to really run these appointments and really retain this information. You're not gonna be able to do it. And I promise you that. And so that's what we gotta do. We gotta add that dynamic to the mix and to the fold, all right? Can we talk to them about how important it is for somebody to actually run their appointments in the field and what that'll do for them? Man, so getting in the field, man, will allow you to be, um, build your confidence in the, in the business because you gotta have confidence to be successful. In addition to that, people will need to know how, you know what you're talking about. You can't be running no appointment and you don't know what you're talking about. But people can, they can smell, this is a rookie right here. This is a rookie right here. You don't want to be no rookie in the game, but also you want to get success, man, because success breeds more success. So being, understanding the, the ice, water cold, ice water cold presentation, man, me and Nick, I mean, when I started in 20, ooh, 2017, man, we was at the office doing it one by one, step by step. And now I've become a master copy. I can do it reflexive. I could be talking about something, hold on. First of all, I start off by company means tremendous amount of success. We're looking for sharpening that bitch. People open to the press, open to the possibility to have more money, more freedom. Now, how does more money, more freedom sound? Off the rip. Off the rip. If you don't got it like that, man, you gotta know. Like I know, like you know, you can do it with your eyes closed. And so, in order to be duplicatable, you need to know how to do it ice water cold. I'm talking about cold, cold. All right, Nick. Facts. Facts. That takes time. That doesn't happen overnight. That takes time, but that takes a lot of effort from you. I'm going to give you everything you need to know. I'm going to give you the words. I'm going to give you the structure. I'm going to give you the transitions. I'm going to give you everything, but it's going to take you working on it. I remember when I, I first got involved with Primerica and um, they started trying to train us on the presentation and I got my hands on an audio 
of a leader out in California who was doing the presentation. And I literally, that was my first introduction of turning my car into a classroom where when I got in my car, I would listen to that person do the presentation over and over again. I was pausing it, rewinding it, all that type of stuff because I wanted to master everything in that presentation because when I got in front of it, but then I was also scheduling an appointment, Shadrika. And I was saying, hey man, I think I got it up until this point. I would, I would, I would, I would go out into the field and I would practice what I had been listening to and what I had been working on, because that's where I really grew in front of a live prospect. That's where I really grew. And that's where I was able to test my knowledge and my reflexiveness of the material. See, we're going to give you guys the cheat code, a cheat code that I didn't have because we live in a Zoom world now. Do y'all know that once upon a time, we actually did Primerica face-to-face -face where we actually were on appointments in front of live people at their homes or at a coffee shop, at a Panera Bread or at our office or something like that. And we actually did presentations and could shake somebody's hand or give them a, a dab of fizz bump and sit down in front of them and, and look at them in their eyes live in the flesh. Did y'all know we used to do Primerica like that? I know some of y'all like, what? Hey, Nick, we, we, when we ran an apartment in Paraná, we had like four, four people join like, hey, it was real deal. Jump. Live and direct. <laughs> Jumping. We don't do that anymore, right? We don't have to because technology has allowed us, Queen, to be able to be able to do this from the comfort of your own home. Primerica is truly a home-based business. And because of that, we actually have a transcript that you can use that you can have sitting next to your computer to where you can actually read the transcript verbatim pretty much. And, and, and do the presentation that way. And that's the cheat code. See, we didn't have that luxury back in the day. I couldn't have no presentation, Lana, no transcript sitting next to me as I'm talking to a person line. And I'm like, yeah, um, have you ever heard of Prime? I'm reading it. Like, they'd be like, what is he doing? I didn't have that look. I had to memorize it. But you know what? Because I memorize it, I internalize it. See, I'm getting ahead of myself. But what we want you guys to do, we're going to give you the cheat code. But we want you to take it a step further to where you take it upon yourself to truly become reflexive with this information. And how you're going to do that is with these two steps. Practice drill, rehearse it. Record yourself doing it while you practice your drill and rehearsing, not just on Tuesday. But family, we need you to schedule and run appointments and practice your presentation on those appointments. I, I challenge you uh, to schedule to schedule four appointments, right? Minimum of four appointments, right? Or, or eight appointments or 16 appointments, but, but, but choose your level. But the more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. The more you do it in the field, the more appointments you schedule, the more opportunities you will have to master it and get better at it. So we have a two-step appointment process. If you're taking notes, this is where you wanna start really taking notes, lock in with me, just so you know, our organization, we have a two appointment process. We have a two appointment process. We don't sell a lot of life insurance on the first appointment, right? There's really unique special circumstances where that happens, right? Not saying that we, we don't, we'll never sell life insurance. We will sell some life insurance on the first appointment, but it has to be set up for that, right? These are unique outlier type situations. 90% of the appointments that you are going to run, listen to me, you're going to go, you're going to take a person through a two appointment process. Let me share that with you. What is that two appointment process? I'm glad you asked. Well, the two appointment process, check this out. The first appointment, the first appointment, you're going to do a winning presentation. That's the first appointment. You're going to do a winning presentation. We're going to talk more about what is a winning presentation here in a minute? What's the second appointment? The second appointment, this is a second appointment A, right? Because there's a B to it as well. Second appointment A. On the second appointment, you're going to do the wealth builder, or you're going to do the financial plan, or what people might call the mobile FNA, the mobile financial needs analysis. That happens on the second appointment. And on the second appointment is where you're going to actually close life insurance business. Are y'all with me? That's the second appointment. First appointment, you do the winning presentation. Second appointment, you're going to do the wealth builder and close business. And then the second appointment, B, 
is where you might selectively introduce the business opportunity to certain clients. First appointment, second appointment. First appointment, second appointment. Second appointment, you're doing the wealth builder clothes and life insurance business, investment business, all these different things. And for certain clients who you think that would be great additions to your team and to the business, you're going to selectively introduce the business opportunity to those people on the second appointment. That's our process. We have a two appointment process. That is the system. That's the system that we're running. All right. Now, we don't need anybody finessing. We don't need anybody adding Tony Saturans to the fries. We don't need that. We need you to run the system. Are y'all with me? You ain't adding paprika and all the kind of seasoning to the burger and to the sauce and all that. No, like, look, run the system. Y'all got me? Give me a thumbs up if y'all got me. All right? Fantastic. Two appointment process. Check this out. How do you know a winning presentation is a winning presentation? How do you know? Well, the answer to that family is when it does what it is supposed to do. Well, that didn't really answer the question, Nick. Yes, it did. Because I'm going to take it a step further and talk to you about what is it supposed to do? You know you've done a winning presentation when your presentation has done what it's supposed to do. Well, let's talk about what is it supposed to do. The winning presentation is supposed to educate the prospect. So when you're going through your presentation on that first appointment, you need to be educating the person. What are you educating about? You're educating them about Primerica, right? You're educating them about our mission. You're educating them about our, our strategies for creating generational wealth. You're educating them about our strategic partnerships. You're educating them about, hey, in life, there's two major financial risks, dying too soon, living too long. You're educating them about the rule of 72, the three different investment phases, the theory of decreasing responsibility, and how life and life insurance should work. You're educating them. That's what you should be doing on the first appointment. If your presentation is not doing that, then it's not a winning presentation. If people don't walk away feeling like you gave them something, like, okay, I learned something today, or I got reminded of something, very good, I feel empowered, then it wasn't a winning presentation. You gotta educate the prospect. The next thing you gotta do is the winning presentation is supposed to get the prospect to like you and start to trust you to like you and to start to trust you. So during that time period of you doing the presentation, which your presentation should take no longer than 30 minutes, first appointment should take no longer, listen to me, than 30 minutes, that person needs to start liking you and trusting you. Like, and I like her, I like her, like, yeah. She has a great attitude. Like, man, her energy. I mean, that's a cool brother right there, man. Like, I thought, yeah. You might not say that, but you're getting that sense. Are y'all with me? Like, you might know what I'm talking about. Like, you want to get the person to really start to listen to you. You want to know why you want them to start liking you and trusting you, Lana? Because when you get to that second appointment, you don't need nobody second guessing and questioning what your recommendation. Well, I don't know. You just trying to sell me something. Is that really good? For no, I need you to start liking me and trusting me on the first appointment. So when I start taking you through the wealth builder on the second appointment, I'm adding to that. And by the time it gets down for me to build your financial house, we already on the same page. We have a connection. And you trust me enough with the recommendation that y'all ain't here. That starts on the first appointment. If you're around there offending people, being rude to people, not letting people get their thoughts out, and you cutting folk off on the first appointment, and they getting off the appointment like, well, he was rude, or she was rude, or uh, if they got that, uh, about you on the first appointment, you may not make it to the second appointment. And if you do, you might be struggling to close. Are y'all with me? 
If there's just some unanswered questions about your skill, your knowledge, your command of the information on the first appointment, them problems don't show up on the second appointment. I'm telling you right now. Coach, uh, let me let me add on there what you were saying. So one of the key indicators what, what Nick's saying is when you run an appointment, after you run an appointment, and if no one have no questions, and asking you nothing, you didn't make the connection. Because they like, man, this dude trying to sell me something, this lady trying to sell me something. I don't really feel like they're authentic. But if you really if you're really connecting with the people, they're gonna be laughing. If they ain't nobody laughing, it's a bad sign you ain't doing something. You gotta be laughing and joking and talk about things. You gotta be able to make that connection because that's really important being successful moving forward. Because if you do that on the first appointment, they can refer you to somebody else and do the exact same thing. And that's when when the, the fun happens, right? When they automatically refer, hey, go talk to such and such because he showed me some great information. So, yeah, man, that, that's really important, though, Nick. Yeah, absolutely. And to just kind of add to what Kui is saying, um, the laughing and the joking part, because it's supposed to be an enjoyable experience for the prospect. It's an informal experience. We say, hey, this is very informal. I know Erica does a great job of connecting with the people that she does presentation with. They, they, man, people be ready to invite Erica to Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, when she be doing her presentations. I mean, she's just really good at building a rapport with people. So the laughing and the joking and, and just the, the, the smiles and stuff like that that people give you, that, these are all positive signs. Now, I will say this. Sometimes people will not have questions at the end of the presentation, but they'll say, no, you covered everything. Like, surprisingly, I don't have any questions. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's a good thing. They like, man, you pretty much answered everything. They might have comments like saying, yeah, because, you know, I agree with what you're saying. It may not be a question, but they might have great positive comments because the presentation, believe it or not, teammates, is designed to answer a lot of Black folk questions in what you present. Notice I said Black folk. I'm telling y'all the psychology that is already built into the presentation. We checking off all the boxes that your cousin got floating around in his or her head. Your skeptical auntie. We got all of that. We got all the boxes covered. And most people at the end, they're going to be giving us a positive. Result. It's very rare that we don't get positive and consistent results. And so watch this. We want to get the prospect to like us and trust us. We want to be able to connect with that person. But the third and final thing that the winning presentation is supposed to do, Latoya, is supposed to move that prospect to action. We're going to educate them. We're going to make a connection with them. But we need them to move to action. What action? We need to, them to commit to schedule a second appointment with us so we can do the wealth of the member. I said it's a two appointment process. We need them to commit to that second appointment so we can do a wealth builder with them. And we need to commit to them giving referrals. We need them to commit to giving referrals, right? You can get the referrals later. I normally get mine later if I'm gonna get a second appointment or if it's a situation where they don't wanna do the wealth builder, you get them right then and there. But we need them to commit to giving referrals. If the presentation doesn't accomplish these three things, family, it is not a winning presentation with a heavy emphasis on that last bullet point, move the prospect to action, right? If the presentation does not do that, then it wasn't a winning presentation. It was a presentation. It just wasn't a winning presentation by our definition. Now, let me pause right there. I know I've covered a lot of information. I know I've shared some things. Does anybody have any questions before I move on to the back half of the training? Anybody have anything? any questions or anything like that that I can address uh, at this point. If you don't have any questions, that's fine. We can keep it moving, but I do want to pause just to see if anybody had any questions and need any clarity on anything. All right, going once, going twice. Well, we good, we good, all right. So let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving, all right? And so let's talk about the parts of a winning presentation. So the winning presentation has parts, right? And so let's talk about each of the parts of a winning presentation. If you're taking notes, you most definitely want to write this down. So the first part of the winning presentation is a, a piece that we call the warm-up. The warm-up, right? 
So what is the warm up? The warm up is um, it, it's when we first get on the meeting, on the Zoom meeting uh, with the person that we're meeting with. And, and this is where you welcome the prospect. You welcome them and you thank them for their time. Hey, I appreciate you for being able to jump on this meeting uh, to be able to see this information. I don't think this is going to be a waste of your time. This is really going to be an investment of your time. Like you're welcoming them. You're making them feel warm. You're making them feel appreciated for investing the time to meet with you. That's a crucial piece, guys. That's an important part. So that's part of the warm up. Uh, if you're field training a new recruit for the field trainers that are out there, this is where you have an opportunity to edify your new recruit or the recruit that you're training. It's an opportunity for you to edify that person, right? Will you say, hey, listen, you know, um, Latoya's just gotten involved with our company on a part-time basis. You know, she's doing an amazing job, just been a joy to work with. She's actually going through the licensing process right, process right now, but we're super excited to be working with her. Like, that's me edifying the new recruit, making them a part of the presentation and letting that person know that, hey, man, your friend, your sister, your coworker, man, it's just been an amazing experience to work with them. And, 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 and the reason why we're meeting with you is because of them and the great job that they're doing. That's me edifying the new recruit. That's an important part of the warm up. Are y'all with me, man? Please stay with me. And then the warm up is an opportunity for you to tell the prospect how to look at the information you're going to be presenting. See, most of the time, they don't know what they're about to see. So what I like to do, Queen, I like to set the tone and set the table for what they're about to look at. Look, I, I'm going to present some information about who we are, but I want you to look at it two different ways. As I look, as I share this information, I want you to ask yourself, can you personally benefit from what it is that we do? Because if you can, if you feel that way, we want to interview to be the people that can help you in those areas. Y'all ain't hearing me. See, that's all part of the system. And then I'm telling them, hey, I also want you to ask yourself, who do you know that can benefit? Because we find that referrals from credible people is the best way to connect. And those referrals will be people that we're able to share and bless this information with as well, right? But I wanna tell them how to look at the information. That way they know how to process what I'm going to be sharing with them. And then last but not least, um, I want to get to know the prospect a little bit, just a little bit. I don't ask a whole lot of questions about them and their background, but I'm just saying, hey, man, just to kind of get to know you a little bit better before we get started. You know, where are you from? Are, are, are you from Houston? Are you from, you know, I might already have, um, I'll have the information of where this person lives. Are you, are, you, are you from Louisiana? You know, I'll ask that question and, you know, we'll kind of exchange, you know, some, some conversation a little bit. I say, well, what kind of work do you do? You know, where are you from? What kind of work do you do? And all of that, right? And you know what? We might find some common ground in there. They may have, so you know, they might be a part of this fraternity or that fraternity. They might have this kind of background or discipline. I'll say, hey, man, I used to, I actually have a computer science degree. Like, I'll just make a real quick connection with a person. Get to know them a little bit. Don't spend a lot of time there, but just kind of get to know them a little bit. Family, that right there is the warm up. And as a new person on the team, you right now, you can do the warm up. Yes, you can. Believe it or not, you can do the warm up. If you've seen the presentation just one time, just one time, you, you, you can do the warm up. Yes, you can. Yep, you can. Nick, I can't do the warm up. Man, no, don't put me. Yeah, you can do the warm up. Yes, you can. It ain't that hard. All it is is just you being a nice, courteous person but with a little bit of direction, a little bit of coaching on how to flow through that deal, you can do the warm up. That's the easiest part to get down, y'all, is the warm up, right? You can do the warm up. But that's the first part of a winning presentation is the warm up. Well, what's the second part? I'm glad you asked. The second part is the part that most of you guys probably view as the presentation. It is the who we are, what we do, getting commitments who we are, what we do, getting commitments. After you do the warm up, you need to flow directly in to this portion of the presentation. Who we are, what we do, getting commitments. And that part is all about, hey, you're sharing the credibility of Primerica with the prospect. You're educating the prospect on our financial concepts and strategies, right? And 
The who we are, what we do, getting commitment is designed to get the prospect to commit to the second appointment to do the wealth builder and to get the prospect to commit to giving referrals. That's what the who we are, what we do accomplishes, right? Sharing the credibility, educating the person and getting them to do the commitments of wealth builder and giving referrals. Seem easy enough? Family it is, right? But as you're learning the presentation, this is where you're gonna spend probably most of your time really learning this part. And then part three is the recruiting play. This is the recruiting portion of the presentation, right? We call it the recruiting play. And this one is done selectively on the second appointment after you've closed business. You only present to selective clients after you've closed business with them, after you've closed business with them, you discuss the power of having a life insurance license and an investment license as a means of making more money. And then you actually look to secure the independent business application when you do this part of the presentation. We call that the recruiting play. So, part one is the warm up, part two is the who we are, what we do, getting commitments, and part three is the recruiting play. Any questions? Any questions? Are we good? Those are the three parts of a winning presentation. Aren't y'all so glad I didn't lay out 10 parts of the presentation? Aren't y'all so glad? See, man, folks, see, we got an easy system. One, two, three. You definitely gonna do one and two. You're gonna selectively do number three. Are y'all with me? All right. So we ready. All right, let's 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 keep talking. Uh, let's talk about learning how to do the winning presentation. Um, this is what you need to do to learn how to do the winning presentation. You got to memorize it. We're going to give you a presentation transcript. Matter of fact, you guys check your emails. I've emailed it out. Um, uh, Lana, I didn't I didn't put you on an email because you had just gotten licensed and I had you a part of a group and I ended up taking you out of the, the group of unlicensed people. I'm like, well, she's already licensed. So Quill will get you the... Um, the presentation material if he hasn't already. Um, but that stuff that you have, that presentation transcript, guys, the transcript are the words that you say to get through the presentation. It's everything that's out there. If you've ever heard me do the presentation, for those who I'm uh, I'm working with, I'm training, y'all look at that presentation transcript, you read that, you're like, Nick say all of this stuff on this deal. Pretty much, dang near word for word, I'm saying those things. I'm very close to it because I've memorized it. You memorize the winning presentation. You got to memorize it because once you memorize it, then you start to internalize it. When you internalize, that's when things become reflexive. That's why you can do it at the drop of a hat. You can do it. You can do it at the grocery store, you know, off the top of your head. You can customize it to a person, whether you're in front of a single person or you're in front of a married couple. You're able to do that because you've internalized it, right? It's very hard to do those things and to wield it and to make it bend and, 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 and move how you need to move if you have not memorized it. And I think that that's where most people get it wrong, Haim, is that people don't memorize the winning presentation. You gotta memorize it so you can internalize it. And then the last thing is that once you've memorized it and internalized it, only then, only then can you start to truly personalize it. Only then can you start to truly personalize it. Well, you can add different flares and, you know, just voilas to it. Not a lot. Don't make a Frankenstein presentation. It don't need too much of this or too much of that. But you can start to really personalize the presentation once you've memorized it and internalized it, right? My presentation is my presentation. I'm following the transcript, but it's very much me. It sounds like me. It feels like me when I'm doing the presentation but that's only because I memorized and internalized this presentation. You said, well, these are not my words. Like Nick, I just really, I mean, I just, it's tough for me to follow a script. Uh, 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 man, uh, can I just say what I want to say, how I want to say it? No, 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 no. Not until you've memorized it and internalized it. Because once you've done those two things, then you can start to person. Y'all got to feel me. I know you, I know it might not make sense. I know you might feel as though he's trying to make me be a robot, all of that. It'll make sense. Trust me, y'all. Once you do it, 
it will all make sense and it will sound, feel, and function just like you. It'll sound like you. It'll feel like you all the way through. I promise y'all, listen, trust me on this. I promise you. But first, you got to memorize it. You got to memorize it. Word for word, you got to memorize it. Word for word, you got to memorize it. And internalize it, then you can start to personalize it. Problem is, Auntie, most people be trying to personalize it before they memorize it. I'm going to make it sound like me. I ain't going to say this. I'm going to say that. I'm going to add this to it. I'm going to take that out. Uh, I don't feel like saying that, blah, blah, blah. So you're trying to personalize it before you memorize it. And then you know what happens? You start doing the presentation, you personalizing it too much. And then you get lost. And then you like, how, how, where, how do I get back on track with this? Pre oh, Lord. Uh, and then you've been on the appointment for an hour and you ain't got no commitment to do nothing because you finessing and you're trying to personalize it too much. Has anybody ever had that happen to them? It's still okay. Tell, tell the truth. Shame the devil. Yeah, I got you. I've been there too. I got you. I'm trying to save you from that. So memorize it, internalize it, and personalize it. Hopefully that makes sense. And then uh, these are tangible tools. These are tangible tools you will need in the coming weeks. When you show up to Tuesday training, this is what we need. We need you to have your presentation PowerPoint readily available on your computer or the PDF file. If you were given a PDF file. So for the people who are not licensed, uh, you should have some type of a training copy or a, a PDF file, um, an Adobe document of the presentation. Everybody else, if you do have the presentation PowerPoint, we need you to have that readily available on your device. We also need you to have a printed out copy, print out a copy of the winning presentation transcript. That way you can pick it up, look at it and read it and all that. Like, yeah, print out a copy of the winning presentation transcript if you haven't already. We need you to have a computer be on your computer with a camera, right? Now, I know some of you guys are having work conflicts and you know, you're know you not able to be on a computer. You, 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 hey, man, you're like, Nick, I'm just, I'm on training. I really can't participate the way I want to because I'm at work. I got it. That's cool. Still plug in. For, for those of us who are at home or who can be at home and be stationary, I need you to join training in the coming weeks from your computer, not your phone. We like that from your computer with a camera and i need you to be in your zoom castle space don't be in the kitchen cooking or anything like that man let's work that out before we get on training because i need you to be locked in you know i don't need you at the grocery store and stuff like that be in your zoom castle space with proper lighting because we're going to practice this thing man we're going to step into the success dojo together and we're going to get better man we're going to get better right those are the tangible tools you're going to need every week. Any questions about that, man? Anybody have any challenges with that? Am I asking for too much? I'm just saying I had a presentation, PowerPoint, transcript, be on a computer with a camera, in your Zoom castle with some good lighting, right? That's all I'm asking. Am I asking too much, Erica? Is that cool? No, I'm not asking too much. I, I hope I'm not, right? So those are the tangible things you're going to need, right? Check this out, family. These are, what I'm going to share with you next, these are the intangible things you're going to need. When you show up on Tuesday, man, we need your good energy. <laughs> Not just your energy, we need your good energy. So you need to show up ready. Good vibrations, great energy. We need your positive attitude. We don't need you speaking and thinking against yourself. All scared to do it. I don't want to feel as though I don't know it. I'm going to mess up and this, that, and that. No, we need your positive attitude. Guys, this is okay. This is a space, a safe space for you to stumble and fall. We're going to help you get up, man. We want you to get better. Man, we love you for it, man. Man, we all go through on this journey to get better, man. You know, you're not, you know, you're not messing up. You're getting better. You're learning it. And so we just need you to have the right attitude around getting better right? Man, every movie that you watch, man, you know, every, every, 
every success story, a movie that we all love and attracted to, man, the, the, the hero or the shero, man, they're going through a rough time, right? Like, man, they, they're failing, but they failing forward and we rooting for them. Hey, get up, get up, keep going, keep going. You're almost there, man. We love watching those movies until it becomes our life. You know, oh, I'm not doing that. Like, no, no, we need your positive attitude. So have a great attitude about growing and getting better. That's an intangible that we need you to have. And then on top of that, guys, we need your strong work ethic. We need you to work. Man, we need you to spend some time. Practice drilling and rehearsing, scheduling and running appointments. We need your strong work ethic and we need your commitment to excellence. To excellence. That's what we need is your work ethic, your strong work and your commitment to excellence. What do I mean by the commitment to excellence? Excellence is a standard. We don't need you to just learn the presentation. Are y'all with me on this? I ain't trying to get you to just learn. No, I want you to master the presentation. Take some pride in it. Like, like coach, I got it. I'm so good. I, I, look, I want you guys to sound and be better than me at the presentation. And I don't feel that I'm that good. I'm better than a lot of y'all. And I, and I say that humbly and with love, but I want you guys to be so awesome at this fundamental that you sound and, 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 and move and operate better than me. And this week, that's what I'm looking for because I know when I approached it and learned some, I approached it in excellence. I said, I'm going to learn this. I'm going to become a master at this because one day I want to teach it to somebody. See, I can't teach it to nobody if I just really kind of barely know it. No, I want you to move and commit to excellence with this, right? And that's how I want you to approach it, your commitment to excellence. And, and one of the questions I'm going to ask you repeatedly is, is, is that the best that you feel that you can do it? But do you feel you can do it better? Is that your best? Is that the best that you feel that you can do it? Do, do, do you feel that that right there is your absolute best that you can do the presentation? And for the winners, the answer is going to be constantly no, because you're always going to feel that you can go a level higher. And that needs to prove you. So this training will not work. Quick reminder, all of what we're going to be going through, it will not work unless you practice drill, rehearse, and schedule and run appointments. That's the secret sauce that we have not included in the past trainings that we've done. Practice drill, rehearse, and schedule and run appointments. So guys, I need your commitment to work and scheduling and running appointments. And in that process, I promise you, we're going to get better. We're going to get better. All right? That scheduling and run appointment piece is everything. We need to pair it. We need to pair that with the practice drill, rehearse. All right? And that's all I got. Any questions? Any questions? Next week, it's on and popping. I just wanted to set the stage, E. I ain't, I ain't want to scare nobody and run nobody off the show. I want you to know, hey, this is what's going to be happening. But I'm telling you, on the backside of this, man, you're going to be like, you're going to be like a coach. You're going to be disciplined. You're going to be skilled. You're going to be phenomenal on the backside of this. Let me say this. For those who have been around for a while, for those who have done the presentation, you're a field trainer and all that type of stuff. I need you to be on your game too. I need you to be ice water cold. I need you to relook at your transcript. Yes, I do. I need you to revisit your flow, your language, your trend, how you're doing the presentation. I need you to revisit those things. I emailed them out to everybody. You got the tools too. I need you to revisit it because this is going to be an opportunity for you to kind of button down some things, maybe tighten some things up as well. It's always good for that. All right. Any questions before we move forward to announcements? We good? This is good. All right. Perfect, guys. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I'm going to upload this to the YouTube channel so you can watch it and just really kind of get in your mode and prepare yourself. And I love you guys. And I thank y'all for this. And I'm so excited about what's about to happen in the life of my business as a result of us starting with the winning presentation and then building on it from here 
so we can become one of the greatest organizations in the company. All right.